I heard the amazing words of enthusiasm and a really like uh, amazement of his agent, Brian Wallstrom, who is my dear friend. And Brian started to describe me, this young man, in ways that made me my attention like flip. Uh, then a I good agent. That's a good agent. Yeah, but it wasn't very <laughs> a great agent, of course. I mean, but it was not just agenting. He was really passionate about you, in a way that really created an image in my mind. That of course was met with even greater enthusiasm when I met the gentleman in front of me here now. Mother wants us. I don't actually meet many others. Why did you offer to bring me along? You seem nice. I am nice. And then I saw Timmy in Inter Interstellar. I loved the movie, it was great. I mean, Chris Nolan. But I knew that Timothy was in it, so I was driven by that desire in the first place. Seeing I Am Love and just admiring the acting in it, admiring the story, but also admiring just the quality of it that felt beyond me and my experience in New York at the time. And there's just wonderful performances in it too, you know? And it's how I felt when I watched The Bigger Splash, when I was in Luca's apartment in Cremo, when we were about to shoot Call Me By Our Name, I just thought, oh wow, I'm in the safest hands from an acting perspective, but also from a visual perspective. And uh, I'd like to, you know, it still is in my life, These beautiful idyllic settings, although I've been in more of them, but it really wasn't when I was in, when we were getting ready to do Call Me By Your Name and stuff. I thought it was just a total dream, like the breakfast setting of the table, and I was a Cocoa Puffs kid. I am privileged because I, I 99% of the time meet great artists in my work, and so I am graced by their commitment and their intelligence in understanding performance and, 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 and kind of like investigating human nature so that they can then translate it into what they do as, a, as a performers. So when you meet people that are as extraordinary as Timmy, you want to keep the conversation because as deeply we went with Call Me, I feel like we have many more things to do and many more aspects of portrait of people that we can do together. And it's beautiful and it's uh, fun and it's um, reassuring. You know, like when you're in a family, you can show sides of yourself that are not the most, uh, let's say, uh, public, uh, but you are in the safe hands of your family. And I think that is a great uh, way of living and that's fantastic to do um, in film because you can really be open and completely fragile in front of the people that you love and they love you so that you can then find things uh, that are deeper, probably. I saw a documentary on the making of Fanny and Alexander by Bergman, and he made that last movie he made, was the previous to the last, but he made it with a lot of his group of actors and people, and, and you could see how Bergman was really open to show what he didn't know, more than what he knew. And I think what do we do is searching for what we don't know, and then be kind of confident that we can really show up that we don't know much, but we can try to find the answer of what we don't know. I think there were multiple moments uh, where I was given that feeling. Like we started the interview with, I feel like the second Luca gave me that opportunity, not only to be in Call Me By Your Name, but without an audition, which Taylor's talked about now with Bones and all, that leap of faith. When you're coming up as an actor, there's a lot of rejection. Every actor's gone through it. So to get that sort of bridge to the promised land without the jumping through hoops that is so involved in the process, it's almost too good to be true. And then the experience that I had on Bones and all, but also Call Me By Your Name, where Luca's priority is the arc of the story, but the behavior of the human within it to capture humanity's the biggest insecurities and self-doubt, self-loathing, all the things that make us truly human. And um, it's just a dream. And it's what makes me so grateful at the great reception the movie's gotten, but also how much people have been showing up to the premieres and stuff because so much of what gets consumed in media or music or, or film, there's higher corporate interests, there's focus grouped uh, scripts and promotional materials. And this is a Luca Guadagnino film with a Luca Guadagnino poster and a Luca Guadagnino marketing. And, and uh, I and Taylor are, you know, watercolors. And that's, man, I want to do it again and again with Luca. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> you don't think I'm a bad person. All I think is that I love you. I mean, I felt very strongly that Taylor was 
a great companion piece for us and that she was going to become a partner, a complice in the process. And then we all gathered at the house of Peter Spears, a very wonderful producer, and we made the makeup and hair test and costume test for like a month and a half, two months before shooting. And that was already a nice moment of uh, breaking the ice. I think there was something about Taylor that was about being really like ready to go and jump into the pond and really swimming to this, into these waters of this movie without any uh, so, uh, uh, over structures in her mind, which sometimes can happen. And Timothy is like that as well. There was a great meeting there. There was a great partnership happening, but it was a, a partnership that involved Timothy and Taylor, the team working on the, on the visual of the aspect of the characters. There was also our wonderful DP, Arseni. So we started to build in a nudge of what was going to become the experience. One thing that I loved very much throughout the process of making the movie is how wonderfully chivalrous you were with Taylor and how you really held her hand throughout the process. And yeah, I mean, she doesn't need to be held a hand, but at the same time, it's like you get into a place where there is already a partnership or a communion and um, you want to feel included and that was wonderful. But also she was so generous, like I will never forget the intensity of her vibrations performing the first few days we started the movie with. We started the movie working with her and with the magnificent Andre Holland, which I completely adore and I salute Andre is one of the greatest. So like, and I saw that, and I saw that we were shooting Marin Abandon, being a, finding herself alone in the house, and the way in which she really summoned much of her inner spiritual world to show that on screen for the camera was amazing. You know, like I love actors that they do not resort to the trickeries of being actors who perform drama. I don't. I think that's now evident in my work. I like actors who are committed to really go and be raw and naked in front of the camera, uh, metaphorically. Sometimes mm -hmm. not only. Didn't know who I had permission to merge her into me. You want it darker. We kill the flame. It's almost like if we were shooting, we were in a Roman room right now, there's beautiful Roman art on the walls, and it would be to, if I were to go into another project, it would be to, to take in every living fiber of the room, the way on a Call Me By Your Name or a Bigger Splash, those fibers, could induce envy by the elevated lifestyle and how scrumptious everything feels and delicious. And on Bones and All, it can kind of repel you sometimes, the intensity, the condition these characters are living in. But I just remember on, on Calling By Your Name, the hairdresser getting sick and somebody having to come in and, and <laughs> if I can share it, and Luca basically doing it himself because he was so specific to uh, the hair that he knew how to do it himself or in the breakfast scenes, I don't know if you remember this too, that you were arranging the the food exactly as you wanted it to be. Or here on Bones and All, there's a set that Luca was physically destroying. You know, he's he's a craftsman in that way. And not to just do an ad for Luca, but he does interior design, and he's always he's always sketching on his iPad, which is a nice joke Zendaya and I have on on set because if we're on our phones or whatever, sometimes we'll assume a Luca posture, <laughs> and uh, because he can't stop, he literally can't stop, and. Uh, that's so cool to be in partnership with that. And uh, he, these are the, like the true creatives to their bones, you know? I went to Budapest to yeah. meet uh, Z and Timmy, and I was, and we were doing ADR for, for Z on, on Challengers, and we did that on your backlot. Yeah. On, and I, I went into the backlot and I saw the, a, a huge dune set. I went there and I, touched all, there was the helicopter. That was a moment in which I, was, I could see Monsieur Villeneuve, the wonderful craft, I mean, wow. You sketched, you etched your name into one of the... I wanted to, yeah. but then the Bahia and Gloria said, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> you look like the kind that's convinced himself he's got this under his thumb. He made it. But you pull on one little thread and... I'm ready. <sighs> My lord. I like this word Luke has been using vibration because the movie's really a vibration. And uh, to to the fact of that, there was no, I don't think there's any day that felt confirmed because it just felt like just these expressions of identity and of story. But that day on the in Nebraska, um, 
on the, on the cliff's edge. Yeah, that scene uh, between Taylor and I. There are these horror elements, there's these cannibalistic elements, so to capture a scene between two humans that felt about sharing the innermost parts of you that make you feel the most insecure and being seen by someone else, being loved by someone else, being held by someone else, having space made for your trauma, that felt like we were onto something special. And then... And I must say the same. That day, those three days, we shot over three sunsets and one sunrise were just incredible and sublime and there was a collapse a collapse of things happening there first of all lee spurting out the truth of himself to maren and maren and lee finally releasing one another to one another then there was nebraska such an incredibly beautiful place then there was the light of Nebraska, mm -hmm. the sunset and the sunrises are were amazing. You know, Luca alluded to it earlier. I visit they, they, the production started in sequence with Andre Holland and Taylor. So I visited set one of those earliest days, and just to sing Taylor's praises, just seeing the kind of work she was doing with Andre right away, I feel like if anything, I felt like, oh man, I got to step step my game up because she was <laughs> just bringing it immediately. You know, so I felt like our movie's protagonist Taylor from the beginning it was like it was on.